Elisha na nitaomba dakika zingine niweze ku complete the thoughts that I have today about this it is important that I finish these thoughts we have read this scripture before but I will read it again second kings chapter 1 chapter 2 second kings chapter 2 verse 1 to 25 and I want us to rise if you are able to rise start so that we can read the scriptures together to simana to weza kusoma neno la mwana second kings chapter 2 verse 1 to 25 the bible says and it came about when the lord was about to take up a legion by a wild wind to heaven that elisha went with elisha from gilgal elisha, elisha said to elisha stay here please for the lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Then the sons of the prophets who are at Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? And he said, Yes, I know. Be still. Elisha said to him, Elisha, please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came down to Jericho. The sons of the prophets who were at Jericho approached Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be still. Then Elijah said to him, to him Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Now fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood opposite them at a distance, while the two of them stood by the Jordan. Elijah said to his uh, he, Elijah took his mantle and folded it together and struck the waters, and they were divided here and there, so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had Crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, Please, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. And he said, You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. As they were going along and, and talking, Behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, horses of fire, which separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a wine wind to heaven. Elisha said to it, Elisha saw it and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and his horse and his horsemen. And he saw Elijah no more. Then he took hold of his, 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 own, his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. He also took up the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and returned and stood by the bank of the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and struck the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had also struck the waters, they were divided here and there, and Elijah crossed over. Now when the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho opposite him saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. They say to him, Behold now, they are, they are with, with your servants, 50 strong men. Please let them go and search for you, for your master. Perhaps the spirit of the Lord has taken him up and has cast him on some mountain or into some valley. And he said, You shall not send. But when they asked him, until he was ashamed, he said, Send. They therefore, they, they sent therefore fifty men, and they searched three days, but they did not find him. They returned to him while he was staying at Jericho, and he said to them, Did I not tell you, don't go? Then the men of the city said to Elisha, Behold, now the situation of, of, of this city is prison, as my Lord sees. But the water is bad, and the land is unfruitful. He said, Bring me a new jar and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. And he went out to the spring of the water and threw 
Psalm 88 and say, Thus says the Lord, I have purified these waters, there shall be no, there shall not be from them, from their death or unfruitful anymore. So the waters have been purified to this day, according to the word of Elisha, which he spoke. Then he went up from there to Bethel, and as he was going up by the word, by the way, young lads came out from the city and mocked him and said to him, Go up, you poor hair, go up, you poor hair. When he looked behind him and saw them, he cast them in the name of the Lord. Then the two female bears came out of the woods and tore up 42 lads of their number. He went from there to Mount Carmel, and from there he returned to Samaria. Blessed Father, would you speak to us for your glory and for the praise of your name, in Jesus' name. Okay. Amen. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Principles of fatherhood and sonship from the life of Elijah, Elisha. I have spoken about this several times. I want to bring it to a close. But I have to recap before I can bring this to a close. We have said already that the Lord was about to take Elijah up in the heaven by a wild wind. Everybody knew that Elijah was going to be taken by the Lord, by a wild wind. It was common knowledge in the land of Israel that, that time. They knew it. In fact, they tell Elisha, do you not know that this master, your master is going to be taken? He say, yes, I know, uh, but you be still. So it was common knowledge that Elijah was going to be taken. But Elijah, Elisha knew it. But Elisha makes a decision. He says, he, he vows by heaven, he vows by God that whatever happens, if God still lives and you live, I'm not leaving you. Until I see that you are dead or you are gone, I'm not leaving you. So he says, I'm not leaving you. So he, leave, he cleaves to him, he hunts with the leader. A leader will discourage him again. So they are coming from Gilgal. From Gilgal, he says, I'm, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. So will you stay here? The Lord has sent me to Bethel and he said, No, I'm going with you to Bethel. When they go to Bethel, the sons of the prophet tell him, Do you not know that your master is going to be taken away? They say, Yes, I know, but hold your peace. Be still. And Elisha Elish also tells him, Would you not stay here? Because the Lord has sent me. Now the Lord has sent me to, to Jericho. And he says, I'm going with you, I'm not leaving you. And the statement that he repeated every time Elijah told him that you stay here, the Lord has sent me over there. He says, as long as you live and as long as the Lord lives, I will not leave you. Remember, God cannot die. So Elisha was not expecting God to die. So that he can leave Elijah. Elijah can die, but, he, but God cannot die. So what he was telling him, I'm not going to, I'm not going to leave you until you are gone. I stay with you. So the first principle that we learned was that it is the principle of cleaving. Principle of cleaving. Cleaving onto the man of God or cleaving onto the Father. Elisha cleaved, he clung to, he clung to Elisha, to Elisha, he did not leave him, he clung there and he waited on, he said he refused to go. Remember the time of Ruth, Ruth is being urged by Naomi that please go back, uh, now I don't have, even if I'm going to, uh, I don't have sons, and even if I'm going to bear a son, uh, how long will you wait for the son to marry you? So go back to your people. Go back to your gods. And Ruth says, in fact, Orpah had gone back to her gods. Naomi explains that Orpah has gone back. Your sister has gone back to them, to her gods and to her people. So she went back to her gods. And Ruth says, do not entreat me to leave you because I will not. I'm not going to leave you. I understand the source of my blessing. I am determined to be blessed with you. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Your house will be my house. 
your blessings will be, I'm not leaving you, I'm going with you. So Ruth, when Naomi understood that Ruth was going, Ruth was not going anywhere, that Ruth was going to follow, she stopped urging her uh, to leave. She cleaved to Ruth, to, uh, to Naomi. The same way Elisha cleaved to Elisha. He knew that the blessings, there are blessings that are with Elisha that I must get. There are blessings that are with Naomi, Ruth and Estul. Your God is going to be my God. I have made that decision that your God is going to be my God. Where you stay, I will stay. If there is some little space that I can stay, I will stay with you. Where you die, in fact, she asked, where you die, I will die also. So I'm not going to leave you. Even when you are dead, I'm committed to you. Hallelujah. I'm committed to you. Even in your death. Because I will stay there until I'm also going to be with you. Now, to the to the two of them, a father is one who is ready to open his life for the sons to study him and to know him. And the son must commit himself to, to follow the ways of the father. And I also say that fatherhood requires that you have good followers or good sons that can follow you because followership is good leadership. You cannot lead until you know how to follow. If you know how to follow, you will know how to, how to lead because you follow a leader and you understand the ways of a leader. When you are, when you are a good son, you follow the ways of the father so that you are, you are able to be like a father. Number two, which we also say, is the principle of staying focused. Focus. Staying focused. When the sons of the prophet discouraged Elisha to stop following Elisha because of his master was to be taken away from him, he stayed focused. Verse 3 and verse 5. He never was swayed by their persuasion. He was not swayed. He was not distracted. He stayed on. He knew what he wanted. He had faith both in Elijah and the God of Elijah. He had watched Elijah and knew his God and what God can do. This man had walked with Elijah. He knew the God of Elijah and he knew what that God can do. So he stayed on. He says, if God lives and you live, you are the one who has taught me these things. I'm not going to leave you. So he was focused. When he speak distracted by people, he did not, uh, he did not get swayed by their dispersion. He said, leave this man, he's going to leave you. Remember, the same sons of the prophets are also sons of who? Sons of, Eli of, of Elijah. But they are telling Elisha, this guy is going away, so leave him. And he said, I'm not leaving him. I'm staying with him till the end. Two sons never get distracted by petty politics. Sons, who are really sons, indeed, they are never distracted by petty politics. They focus on the end product. They focus on the bigger vision. They focus on the bigger picture. They focus on the end. They focus on the destination. They stay focused because they know where they are going. Their mind are set to the goal and their heart persuaded to have nothing but the vision of their father. They know their father. They know what their father is able to do and they have been persuaded by the God of their father or by the actions of their father. They know that whatever our father does pros prospers. We have to stay with our father. Good sons never get distracted by the things of this world. They have nothing in their hearts but a love for their father and a love for the things that the father does and a focus on the vision of their father. Now, we say, by faith, sons take hold of the promises of their father. And faith is the substance of things hopeful. The, the conviction of things not seen. Faith when a vision is given to you and you hold it by faith, that promise will come to pass that one day. As a good son, hold it in your heart. Put 
put it in your heart. Give it a conviction. Give it a faith. Believe in it. And in time, God will bring it to pass. Principle number three. And we also talked about this. Principle number three. The principle of waiting. Waiting. Elisha knew that the leader was to go. But he was he kept focused and kept waiting for the due time. The sons of the prophets had already retired and said, Oh, this guy is gone. We may need. I'm telling you, it was common knowledge that Elisha was to be taken away by a wild wind. It was common knowledge. Elisha knew it. But Elisha was focused. And he waited for the time when Elisha will be taken away. And you chew a kabisa. Elisha, Elisha, I'm a Elia at the Chukuliwa. Like he happened to Roka. He waited until he saw him being taken by the chariot of fire or the chariot of Israel from him. And he was willing to stay by his side until he's taken away. Good sons will stay by their father until he's gone. Do not allow anything to discourage you from waiting on the promise. There are some times that a father will give you a promise or the leader will give you a promise. Wait on it. Wait on it. Get focused. Don't be distracted. Get focused. Cling to your father. Get focused to your father or to the visions of your father. And then keep waiting until the right time. In due time, the promise will come to be. Now, do not allow anything to discourage you. When Elisha, when he was told to wait, Elisha was told to wait for the blessing till the time of translation. He was willing to, to wait in verse 10. If you see me taken away, it shall be so. If you don't, if you miss seeing me, then you're not going to gain it. Are we, are we seeing that? If you see me, if you wait until you see, you will have it. But if you if you do not see, or if you, you get distracted and don't see, then you miss it. Focus. Waiting. Hallelujah. Focus and waiting. The condition was wait until you see. When you see me taken away, then it shall be in your heart. It shall be. It shall happen. Elijah Elisha has he has seen Elisha. He has seen the great performance, the great miracles that Elijah has done. So he was sure that if Elijah tells him something, it is going to be, it's going to be, it is true, it is going to be. But you see, there are people who never wait. Some people have made shipwreck of their lives because of mistrust and not waiting. They are not ready to wait. And they will dismiss the instruction of their father. And do other things. They say this one is not working. So they will do it. They will do it differently. Some have made a shipwreck of their lives for dismissing the instruction of their fathers. Some people have injured their calling in Christ. Because of going ahead of God. And not taking time to wait until the right time. Many people have destroyed their calling. Kwa sababu anataka kukimbia mbele ya mbele ya Mungu. Umeambiwa kwamba utakuwa mchungaji. Ama wewe ni prophet, ama wewe ni mchungaji mkubwa. But you want to go ahead of God. It shall not be. You got to wait for the right time for God. When God plants a seed, there's the time of growing for the seed to be manifested. Hallelujah. It's a big tree. There is a time for the seed to be, to grow. It is planted, then it grows, then it gets to, to be big and be manifested. There are people in this, uh, in this Kenya today that we do not know them. Like in one or two. When we do it, come up with a wonga that you took up, that we took up a new battery. We do it, come up with a karaoke. I'm a karaoke one, you do it, come up with a. But Sikumocha, 
When God wants to reveal the person, when the person is ready for revelation or for manifestation, God will bring him up, you will know. People have shipwrecked their calling. When they are people calling Yahoo, Wait is the principle. We see Elisha waiting to see what he has been told. When you see me go up, it shall be so. Hallelujah. Are you waiting? God works with time, remember. So observe his timing. He does not work without time. God works with Time. Observe the timing of God. He blesses in due time. You may not be blessed today, but tomorrow, because God, want, God is working with time, He will bless you. Hallelujah. You may not have a way to push it up in the law that was a vision. La Zina Utamota, Utamota, nine months, the outside. In due time, there is a manifestation. Hallelujah. To wait for the manifestation. Wait for the revelation. Wait for the appearing of the blessings. The blessings are there. Wait for the appearance of the, of the blessing. He works with the time. In due time, he will bless you. So wait on. You might be asking a hard thing from God. The same way Elisha asked Elijah a hard thing. In fact, Elijah admits, He admits. But he said, Anyway, if you see me go up, it shall be so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It might be a hard thing that you're asking. But if you see me go up, if you wait on and take the right time, it shall be so. Hallelujah. Amen. Things may be tough in your life. And the things that you're requiring of the things that you are asking God are way above. It is like a mountain. It is, a, it is like a mountain to you. After you let put on a spear and I have a sema ah, we put on a cheesy. The wait on until the right time. God will do it. If you see me go up, it shall be so. If you see me go up, it shall, it shall be so. So wait on. In, in Proverbs chapter chapter 23 verse 22 to 25 the Bible says this listen to your father who begotten you and do not despise your mother when she's old buy truth and do not sell it get wisdom and instruction and understanding buy truth do not sell it away Get wisdom and understanding and instruction. The father of righteousness will greatly rejoice, and he who sires a wise son will be glad in him. Let your father and your mother be glad, and let her rejoice who gave birth to you. If you are a wise son, your father will rejoice. If you are a foolish one, your father will have a lot of a lot of pain and heartache. Be a son that rejoices the heart of the Father. What do you need? Buy the truth, don't sell it away. This is the truth that I'm saying. One of the truths I'm saying is cling to your Father. Number two, fo focus. Stay focused. Number three, wait. The principle of waiting. And Elijah, Elijah asked, no, no, Elisha, Elisha asked for his spirit because he wanted a prophet. He wanted he was to become a prophet instead of Elijah. And you call him Gepa when Afasia Elijah. So Akauliza Akauliza Elisha. Mimi Elijah. Naomba double portion of your a double portion of your spirit. Because he was to get into the seat that his father was where he was. So he asked, I want to carry on with the work. I want to carry on like you, Father, has done it. Please, may I have, may I have a double portion of your, of your spirit. And the Bible says, 
he waited until it was the right time. Elisha asked for a double portion of the spirit. And the double portion of the spirit does not mean twice of the legion. I know people confuse that. When Gide wanafunza wanasema kwamba uh, sasa alipokea mara maradufu ya Elish ya el, my spirit maradufu. He what he was asking for that he wanted to have a double a double portion. Double what the rest will have. In Israel, a double portion, you let you let it get a kubwa, you let it get a kubwa. What I'm saying, and you want a pewa, say a kiwa na vitu, and a gawa, katikati, and a patia, kubwa, you let kubwa na pewa yo, yo half, and half hour in Guinea, and a kama ni shirini, what a gawana, yo in Guinea. That is what double portion means. Double the others. So Elisha is asking, I want to inherit, I want to be the first of the sons in your house. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to be the first of the sons in your in your house. I want to them, I want to inherit a double portion. Wali kwa na gawa na bili, wengine wana chukua na mmoja na mmoja. So he is asking for double better than the, the rest of the sons. It's an holy ambition. And you can, any gift that you earnestly seek for, God will do. God will give. Elisha asked for the double portion of the Spirit. Apu Elisha vitu zingine. And wana fika mahali, nabu ya jordan. Elia anamuliza. Basi, ni meona kuna kitu unatafuta. He knew. Fathers know. Fathers know when sons are following and they are following with intention. He knew that Elisha, Elisha was requiring something, was desiring something. Akauliza, pastor sasa sema, hile unataka. Kwa sababu wakati ndiyo, wakati ndiyo huu. Sema hile unataka. Ukiniona, Naka sema, ah, yo ndo ulisa ni gumu. Lakini ukiniona ni kienda, itakoni. Ukikosa kuniona, basu meikosa. He was asking a hard thing. And the father knew, he was asking. The something is asking. He followed him from Gilgal, went to Bethel. Followed him from Bethel, went to Jericho. Followed from Jericho to Jordan. And to the other side of Jordan. And he knew, this guy is looking for something. What can I do for you? Elijah, I will say, but ask God what you want God to do for you. Say, ask what you want me to do for you. And when he was told, do you, do you, do you think that Elijah, Elijah is the, is the one of the spirit that was in, in him? But he says, if you see me God, then it is. He had that assurance that whatever is, is, God will do. Hallelujah. God will do it. Hallelujah. That is the conviction that we need to have with our fathers. Elisha akamini kabisa. Vile Elia amemwambia itakuwa. And it was. Principle number four. The principle of faith. And that takes us to the principle of faith. Believe in the words of your father. Principle of faith. If you are going to relate with your father well as a son, believe in the words of your father. I'm saying you buy the truth. Don't say it. Gain understanding. Gain wisdom. And you're going to be like your father. He said in verse 10, you have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I'm taken from you, it shall be so. He believed it. Paul tells Timothy, do not neglect the spiritual gift within you, which was bestowed upon you by the laying on of my hands and the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. They were saying, 
and the, the prophetic utterance of the man. It was it was so. The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter chapter two verse one, verse one to three. Then he said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet that I may speak with you. And as he spoke to me, the spirit entered me and set me on my on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. As he was speaking to him, as he was speaking to Ezekiel, there was a spirit that came upon Ezekiel. When you believe in the words of your father, it shall be so. Believe. The principle of faith. Baba akisema kwamba nita kufanya hivi. Believe. It shall be so. The principle of faith. The fathers have a prophetic words. Or the fathers prophetic words or utterances and touch deposit grace into your life. Let the prophetic utterance of your father mentor and mold you to your destiny. Hallelujah. Baba akikuweleza kitu ushike. Let the prophetic utterance, let the, the speaking of your father mold you to become what God wants you to be. Listen to the words of your father. Obey the words of your father. Have faith in the words of your father. Believe in the prophetic utterance of your father. They will mold you to your destiny. Greatness lies in the words of your father. If your father tells you you can be great, you can be great. Hallelujah. If your father tells you, and I told you a story of my own brother, what the father told him, and he has become what the father told him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can become principle number principle number number five is the principle of obedience. Behold, verse, verse 11, verse 12. Verse 11, verse 12. You are you're there. You can read it for me. Verse 11, verse 12. Anybody? Your Bible is open. Yes, read 11, 12, chapter 2 of 2nd Kings. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind, in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried, and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and the chariots and horsemen of Israel, and 